Well, it's time to pause and make sure that we know all the expressions that are being thrown around here because a lot's been thrown at you in a short period of time. And it's important you're able to pull apart the different phrases that are used here, the different expressions that are being used here, and know which one they're talking about when they mention it. So maybe this is a review. It's possible it's a review for you. Or maybe it's the building of a reference page or a review page so you know which thing is which. You know, I can imagine you having this sheet on your desk at all times so you can reference the different um, expressions and equations that we've seen so far. So we're looking to match up here. We want to know the expression for Riemann sum, definite integral, average value, part one of the fundamental theorem of calculus, and part two of the fundamental theorem of calculus. And this great, which serves as a great introduction to working through uh, a little more examples on part one and part two of the fundamental theorem of calculus. So let me just look over these for a second. The first one says integral of f at x d, dx from a to b is capital F at B minus capital F at A, and then we've got limit as N goes to infinity, K uh, summation, K equals 1 to N, F at CK, uh, dotted with delta X, and then we've got 1 over B minus A, integral A to B of F at X DX, and then K equals 1 to N. Okay, this looks a lot like the second one. Um, it, it says K equals 1 to N and F at CK dotted with delta X, but it doesn't have the limit out there in front, so we've got to decipher what the difference is between those two. And then the last one, uh, derivative by DX, integral of A to X, F at T DT equals F at X. So these are the five that you have to deal with. Now, for me, the easiest one to recognize is the average value because it's got that 1 over B minus A out there. So it's summing up the whole thing from A to B, F at X DX. So it's adding up all the pieces, but then you got to divide by how wide it is. So this one's the average value. Maybe it's the most recent thing you've seen as well. So uh, maybe that's why that one's the easiest to recognize. Uh, the next... Uh, ones are the part one and part two of the fundamental theorem of calculus. And actually, it, the way I taught them, one of these is called part one and the other one's called part two. But every once in a while, you'll see a prof or a teacher teach it in the opposite way. And these part one and part two get uh, reversed. So we won't get too excited about which one's part one and which one's part two. There are two parts. And this is the one I called part one. And it said, if you take the derivative of an integral, you get the function back. That is, how much are you adding on to an area when you take the derivative? You're adding on the function value every time. And we're going to see this one in action next lesson. If you're like, well, I sort of got that, but I don't really know how to use it. That's fine. The next lesson really goes into delving into explaining that. So that leaves this one up here as fundamental theorem of calculus. of calculus, and this is part two. And that one says, if you want to find the integral of f at x dx, you find the antiderivative, and you um, evaluate it at b, and you subtract the antiderivative, evaluate it at a. It makes for a nice evaluation theorem of how to find integrals without going to our calculator, without going to drawing a bunch of rectangles. Well, these previous two came from before that. Before um, the integral notation came along, we had these two other ways to add up these Riemann sums. And that's what we were talking about before it became the integral was Riemann sums. Now, this one, just adding up n rectangles, was the very first thing we saw in the chapter, is just adding up a bunch of rectangles. And that's what this one says is add up from k equals 1 to n, these length times width, these base times heights. This was the base every time, and this was the height every time. And the base was the delta x at the bottom of the rectangle, and the f at ck was the height that you got of each of those rectangles. So when we were just adding them up, we called them Riemann sums. The big moment came when we said, don't, don't just add them up. Take the limit as n goes to infinity, right here. That is, get an infinite number of these rectangles and use limits to evaluate them. And when we did that, instead of calling it a Riemann sum, we called it a definite 
integral. And we immediately transferred over to this integral notation that you see in the fundamental theorem of calculus, in the average value, and in the fundamental theorem of calculus part one as well, with that elongate, elongated uh, S to uh, indicate that you're doing that sum, because this is just too heavy to carry around. This whole statement here is too heavy to carry around. So we compact that down using the elongated S um, notation there. Okay, so I hope that sheet helps you to reference the five big things we've been working on this chapter and what each one does and a little reminder of how it does it. And if you're worried about fundamental theorem of calculus part one and part two, um, well, that's coming up in the next lesson.